Welcome again. Right now we're at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and this time we're going to read the whole chapter talking about spiritual gifts. We're going to be talking about prophecy. We're going to be talking about tongues. We're going to be talking about a lot of different gifts. Let's get right into it. Paul writes, Now concerning spiritual things, brothers, I don't want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were heathen, that is Gentiles, notice it says were, when you were Gentiles, therefore you are no longer classified as heathen or Gentiles, but you are grafted in to the Jewish vine. You were led away to those mute idols, those idols that don't talk. However, you might be led. Therefore, I make known to you that no man speaking by God's Spirit say Jesus is accursed. No one can say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. That is a very, very powerful statement there because the word Lord here is the same word that is used for God's proper name, yud heh wow heh It's the same word. And so it's more than just saying, you know, Jesus is my master, Jesus is my boss, but rather Jesus is the same God who gave Moshe, who gave Moses the commandments on Mount Sinai. So no one can say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit to realize that. It takes the Holy Spirit to know that Moses in the wilderness encountered Jesus himself. Now there are various kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are various kinds of service and the same Lord. There are various kinds of workings, but the same God, who works all things in all. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the profit of all. God doesn't give you anything just for you, okay? He doesn't want you to be selfish. He wants you to edify, to build up, to encourage, to profit the whole body of believers. For to one is given through the Spirit the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith, by the same Spirit. And to another, gifts of healings, by the same Spirit and to another workings of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another discerning of spirits, and to another different kinds of languages or tongues, and to another interpretation of languages. But the one and the same Spirit produces all of these, distributing to each one separately as he desires. For as the body is one and has many members, in other words, many parts, and all the members, members being like arms and legs and feet and hands, all the members of the body being many are one body, so also is Christ, Messiah. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether bond or free, and were all given to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot would say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not part of the body, is it not therefore not part of the body? If the ear would say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not part of the body, is it not therefore not part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the smelling be? And this is the problem I see in so many Pentecostal slash charismatic churches. You know, you got a Pentecostal church and they say, you know, everybody needs to speak in tongues. Or you've got a charismatic church and they believe in seeing pictures and visions of God and such. And they believe that everybody should. And they teach, you know, they even have classes saying, you know, how to see visions or how to prophesy or how to interpret, you know, all this stuff. That is completely unbiblical. It's very clear here. Not everybody is to speak in different languages. Not everybody is to interpret. Not everybody is supposed to prophesy. Not everybody is supposed to hear God's voice. Not everybody is supposed to see visions. It is so clear here. But how do so many church leaders read this and completely blind themselves to what it actually says? So there's one extreme saying, you know, everybody should speak in tongues. Then there's the other extreme where it's like, nobody should speak in tongues. Listen, we've got to be very sensitive 
to every gift of the Spirit. And believe me, we talked about this before. There are a lot of people out there that believe that they operate in the gifts of the Spirit, believe that they can speak in tongues or prophesy or yada, 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 but it's all just fake. And they don't even know it. You know, they're prophesying from their own spirit and they think it's the spirit of God. They're so proud and arrogant that they think that their spirit is the spirit of God or that they speak in tongues. But a lot of people who do that are just babbling because they are taught to babble. I've seen it in different churches where people go forward and it's like, okay, the preacher lays hands on them and the, and the preacher would say, okay, start with one syllable. Ba, ba, ka, ka, ya, da, da, ma, da. And oh yeah, go home and practice that and, and you'll get fluent in your heavenly language. That is not biblical whatsoever. Where do you see that kind of antics done in the Bible? It's not there, okay? When God gives you a gift, it is a sovereign gift of God. It's nothing you can learn from anybody else. And I've heard a pastor say, well, didn't Eli teach Samuel how to hear the voice of God? Not at all, okay? The story goes that Samuel was sleeping in the temple, okay? Pretty much right there by the Ark of the Covenant. He's sleeping there and he heard a voice, Samuel, and he runs to Eli. He thinks Eli, the priest, called him. Eli says, no, I didn't call you. He go back to bed. Went back to bed. Samuel! And went back to Eli. No, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And finally, Eli caught on. Oh, wait a second now. We got Samuel here, the boy, and he's, he's sleeping right in the presence of God. He's sleeping right there. The Ark of the Covenant is like right there. It's got to be God speaking to him. It doesn't take a spiritual genius to figure that out. Even people of the world, even people who have no spiritual discernment whatsoever could say, hmm, if you got a boy in God's temple before the glory of God, before the presence of God, before the Ark of the Covenant, and he keeps on hearing his name being called, who might that be? calling his name. I mean, it doesn't take a great genius to figure that out. Eli, the truth is, Eli didn't hear the voice of God. In order for God to speak to Eli, God had to send a prophet. If Eli didn't know the voice of God, how can he teach Samuel how to hear the voice of God and prophesy? It is ridiculous. That's not the case whatsoever. A spiritual gift is a sovereign gift of God, a sovereign gift of the Spirit of God, not an acquired skill taught by men. You must take everything with a grain of salt. You must be very careful, but at the same time, don't quench what God wants to do. Don't quench the Spirit of God, okay? If someone has the gift of speaking in other languages, so be it. Bless them in that. If someone else has the gift of prophecy, so be it. Bless them in that. If someone else has the gift of faith, so be it. Bless them in that. And you know, there's the gift of ministry and ministering, the gift of helps too. Ministry of helps, you know, helping people. Charitable works, if that's their gift, Bless them in that. Don't say, you've got to see visions. You've got to receive pictures. You've got to speak in other tongues. Listen, no. You let every part be what that part is supposed to be. Don't try to make the whole body an eye or an ear or whatever you want, okay? Bless each member in its individuality. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now they are many members, but one body. The eye can't tell the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. In other words, there is no part of the body that's insignificant. There is no part of the body that is not needed. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Those parts of the body which we think to be less honorable, on those we bestow more abundant honor, and our unpresentable parts have more abundant propriety, whereas our presentable parts have no such need. In other words, don't put too much praise on the mouth, on the prophet, and less praise on the foot that carries the mouth, okay? So, hey, if you're just a foot of the body, bless you. I mean, that is an awesome honor. That is a wonderful and respectful honor. But God composed the body together, giving more abundant honor to the inferior part, that there should be no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. When one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. When one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 
Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. God has set some in the assembly, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracle workers, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, and various kinds of languages. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with various languages? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. Moreover, I show a most excellent way to you. So this goes right on into 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the next chapter. So don't miss the next session. Until then, seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.